fat quarters. Who hasn't got fat quarters? Well, what if you don't know what a fat quarter is? A fat quarter is 18 by 20 inches. It's a half yard cut in half on the fold. Gives you a nice large square piece to work with. And often they come in bundles like this or individuals like these. So why don't I show you how to make a placemat using four fat quarters, super simple, very nice hostess gift, something for you to use up your fat quarters. Stay tuned. So this is Lori from Lori's Country Cottage. If you can find four fat quarters in your stash that you can part with, you can make four placemats. Here are my choices, so let's get started. Trim the edge of your salvage off of all of your pieces. Whoops. Most of the salvage is unusable, and the very edge of the salvage is often a different thread than what's in the rest of your fabric. So if you ever see that your fabric shrinks different on the edge and almost ripples, that's why they've used a less expensive thread um, on the salvage. So I have trimmed all the edges of my fat quarters, laid them all on top of one another and just trimmed them up so they're square. So I'm starting square. So you want to measure in on the bottom edge from the right hand side three and three quarter inches and you mark that. Then you shift to the top left hand and you measure in five inches and mark that. Now using those two marks you match on both of those marks and you cut across. I mark this with a friction pen. If any if you any anyone doesn't know what a friction pen is, it's a pen that you can write on your product with and the heat that's produced by rubbing on it makes it go away. So you can mark and uh, be sure that, that it will be um, will come off. Um, supposedly it does reappear if it gets cold, like really cold, like Alberta winter cold. So if you marked your quilt and you had the lines all marked on there. You took it outside, left it in your trunk while you were at work all day, and went out, you may see those lines again. But those lines will wash off. So, so you take the two marks, and you cut across through all the layers, all the layers even the one on the edge. Take the top layer of the right hand piece and shift it to the bottom and relayer your pieces. Then you want to sew them together on this these two pieces together and each one will end up being a different combination. So I'll take that to the sewing machine and I'll bring it back. So I've sewn all these pieces together, pressed your seams open, and I've layered them again. Doesn't matter if your edges don't match 100% because that will be trimmed off later. So we want to measure again and so from the right, top right, we go three and a quarter inches in. Up. 
and the bottom left two and a quarter. And you want to slash again. I thought I didn't press hard enough. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Now you want to take your top two and shift them to the bottom. And I still missed a little spot here. Law of demo. So I've cut this apart. No, I have it. One thing I, I forgot to mention, but I'll mention it as soon as I get a second. One thing I forgot to mention is you should mark your layers, um, which is what is the order that you have them in from um, the top to the bottom so that you put them back in the same order. Otherwise, when you do your shifting, you won't get them all to be four different colors. So now I've cut this, and then I want to shift the top two to the bottom. And I will re-sew. And now on each layer, I'm going to have four colors. If I can pull it apart. Making four different placemats. So I'll take that to the machine and I'll sew along this line at a quarter inch. Remember it doesn't matter so much about the top and the bottom edges that they match. Where you want to match is in the middle. Now you don't have to worry about how the edges match. Where you want to make sure it matches is here in the middle. And because of it, it's an angle, you want to go in with your pin at a quarter inch and down a quarter inch here and pin that so that it matches in the center. Okay, I'll take that to the machine and sew them up. As you can see, my placemats need to be trimmed. If I was going to stitch around them with my batting and my backing and pillowcase them, I would want to trim them up to shape. I am going to take mine in to, to the store and we will long arm it there. So I'll want it on one piece of backing. And once it's all quilted, I'll trim them up to size. The other thing that you might want to do, because they're a nice fun thing to do on your sewing machine with your fancy stitches, is use a batting and a backing and quilt them on your own on your machine. I like to use the Hobbs 80-20 batting. It, to me, with the polyester in it, it has a little bit less of a memory, and so it folds nicely in the cupboard, and when I pull it out and put it on the, on the table, it lays flat. It also nice washes up nicely and comes with a fusible batting 
that you can fuse between your layers or yeah, between your layers of your top and your back so it's easy to quilt. You won't need to baste it. You just iron it on. It's a fusible. So thanks for watching. I hope you've got some ideas of what you can use your place, your fat quarters for. And we'll see you tomorrow for Hump Day Deals.